Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of DIY Chris. I'm Chris, and uh, well, first, let me apologize for not being around much. I um, had to stop doing videos for a little while because I had some noisy equipment in the garage that uh, I needed to uh, figure out how to remove or, or you know, change in such a way that it's not so loud because it was really uh, making... Uh, or it's, it's, it was causing the, the creation of videos to be very cumbersome and, and not very good quality. So I apologize for that. Um, I have since figured out how to make my multi-purpose room, which is my garage, which is used for everything I do, uh, be more quiet so that I can do these uh, videos. So uh, the first is going to just be a really quick kind of uh, overview of a new product that is uh, that I designed for the Melius board. Um, if you guys don't know, the Melius board is a project that I've been working on that is basically an enhancement of the 25407 without butchering the actual 25407 too much uh, to where it's completely unrecognizable um, because I actually like the 25407 board. Uh, so just a couple of enhancements uh, so far. Uh, but the one that we're going to concentrate on today is the uh, the EE proms, right? Uh, so the EE proms, you can use the W27C512s, that's one of the mods. You can stick those in for the basic kernel and character ROMs, and you can put whatever images on them you want. With these, we've got um, eight, or these are 64K a piece. So as far as how many you can fit, you can put eight different basic images, eight different kernel images, and 16 different character images. The character ROMs are only 4K in size, so um, you can put, you know, uh, 16 of them on there, which is a lot. <laughs> so uh, while this is cool, you can switch between uh, the different images on the ROMs using these jumpers. Um, it also becomes uh, kind of a hassle, right? Because now you've got to open the top of your case every time you want to change ROMs. So um, I figured, you know, why not use the same kind of switchless uh, technology that uh, we used before with the PIC microcontroller to build the switchless kernel ROM to switch between all of these chips. Um, let me just kind of show you what I'm talking about first is uh, let's see. Uh, picture. All right. Um, so if I turn this on right now um, with this jumper configuration, it's literally going to load the original uh, basic, original kernel, original character. But now, if I take these and I just move them over by one, starting with A12, or sorry, A13, right? We're selecting the first image on, or the second image on each one of these ROM chips now. And the second image on each one of these, I have loaded the um, open ROMs from the Mega65 project uh, in the second slot of each one of these ROMs. So now when we turn this on, Whoops. Yeah, that's right. That should work. There we go. I don't know what the issue was there, but um, actually, um, sorry. It's going to be this, both of these right here. Yep, so that's the different font. So as you can see, um, the reason that I'm switching both of these is because uh, you'll see in a minute how the uh, the switcher works. It, it switches each one of these images 8K at a time. So we can only put um, eight uh, character ROMs on here using the switchless uh, device. Anyways, so that's how this works manually. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to remove all of these jumpers, actually. Every single one, except for the first one, A12, on the character ROM, and we're going to keep that one on high. And um, just a brief kind of introduction to how this actually works is each one of these rows, the middle pin... When we're talking about A13, A14, A15, these middle pins are connecting directly to the pins on the EE proms. The pins on the left and right of the middle pin are low on the left and high 
on the right. Low means they're just going to go to ground. High means they're going to be connected to VCC. And that's how the address is selected on this chip to help it figure out where to uh, basically get the, uh, the data from. Okay. Same thing with this one. This one has four jumpers starting at A12 because we have um, 4K images on here to represent the character. But because we're switching eight only, we're going to only want to have the back section of this chip. Okay. So A12 will always be high. So a logic one. So the device that I have here that I've put together is this thing right here. So uh, what do we have on here? We just have a pick micro and we have a resistor. Um, a pick micro. Why did I say pick micro? I didn't pick micro, right? Um, a mini pick, a tiny little pick, a microcontroller. There we go. That's why I said micro. Um, we have a, a resistor for the LED that's going to be connected here. And then we have our um, three jumpers that represent this one, this one, and this one. Okay, so we've got basic, kernel, and character. And on the back, we've got a pad that we can re uh, solder a cable to, and that's going to go to the restore button. So either the restore button or, or you can use your own switch and put this on one side and the other side of the switch just to ground. And then you can have a separate switch and, and not bother with the restore key. But what I did is I used the 7406, which is right here, uh, because conveniently it has a reset line going to it, which is one of the things we need. And it also has VCC and ground, which the pick needs. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. And as far as the 7406 is concerned, it doesn't, it doesn't care because for it, it's just a pass through. So, we're just borrowing um, from what from the signals and the power that's going to it, right? So this is just a pass through for it. It doesn't even know that any of this other stuff exists. So let me go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. And let's get out of this picture in picture mode. All right, so we talked about this being the restore. So I'm going to connect that to C38, which is where the restore button goes. OK. And um, yeah, so this right here being connected to here is going to allow us to use the restore button on the keyboard, which is actually connected to pin three right here on the keyboard connector. So um, what we'll do now is we're going to focus on connecting uh, these three cables here to basic kernel and character. And the way that this is going to work is we've got A15 right here on the top. And we're just going to plug these into the middle because remember, the middle pins are the pins that are actually connected to the E from itself, which means that those are the pins that control the address lines that are selected, which means these are the ones that we're going to need to connect to the uh, output of the PIC micro to know which one that we need to set. So basic A15 is orange. A15 over here is going to be the left hand side. So A15, A14, A13. So A15 starts over here. So we're going to want to connect orange, then yellow, then green. The top one is basic. The middle one is character, or sorry, kernel, and the last one is character. Um, so I kind of wanted to keep them in the same order. And then we'll take this one here. We'll do purple on A15. Yeah. And then the same thing down here. And then for this one, A15 is over here at the end. 
and the middle row goes horizontally. And fold that in. Black goes to A15. All right, and then, you know, maybe what you could do here is just kind of just a, a zip tie here, and you'd be good to go. Uh, finally, um, I have this connection here for the LED, this LED, which is connected to the top of your Commodore case. So what you might have to do is you might have to get an extension cable for that if you decide to buy this thing. Um, so let's go ahead and bring this back to the center and zoom out so we can do the rest of this. Okay. So we need to plug in the keyboard, obviously. Because we'll need to be using the restore key to do something, to switch. So, picture in, picture on. So let's go ahead and fire up the C64, and I'm gonna just kind of hold this little LED hostage in, inside of my hand here so that you can see it, because um, otherwise it, it's kind of a, a low light situation. Um, so I'm gonna turn this on, and you'll see that it's flashing. And the flashing is kind of just like the pick saying, hey, I'm here, and that's just kind of programmed into the firmware. Uh, the firmware just kind of blinks the LED a couple of times. And, you know, that is for us to know that the chip is actually there and it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So, as you can see, the first thing that pops up is the original uh, uh, Commodore basic kernel and character. Obviously, everyone's seen the screen a million times. So, the way that you control this is you hold down the restore button. Now, if I let the LED blink once, that means I just want to do a reset. Okay, that just resets the C64. If I let it blink twice, then it's going to go to the next ROM image, okay, from where it's at now. So if the jumpers are set to 000, it's going to go to 001. The next time that you do it, it's going to go to 010, and then 011, and then, and so forth and so on. So if I let it blink twice, it's going to go to the next one. The other way that you can select images is you can let it blink the number of times that you want the image selected after the second blink. So it's going to blink once. That would be the reset if you let it go. So forget about that. Blink twice. That's just next. So you forget about that. The third time is the actual image number. So first let's do the, the two blink thing, right? So we're going to just select the next ROM. So let's just blink, blink, let go. And there we go. Now we're running the open ROMs that are part of the Mega 65 project. So we've got open ROM uh, basic, open ROM kernel, open ROM character. As you can tell the character font actually looks different. So now if we want to select the uh, the next image, it's not going to work. So like, watch, we're going to blink twice. Because there is no basic and there's no kernel or character loaded onto these at those positions. So now we could continue to cycle through right until we get all the way to eight and then it starts over back at one to get us back to our original one but that takes too long so we want to just select by telling it which image directly right so we wait for it to blink twice and then the next blink will determine if it's image one and then if you let it blink another time it'll be image two and another time it'll be image three and that kind of thing so we're going to let it blink three times for image one All right, now it's doing a reset, and there we go, back at image one. So now if we let it blink four times, it'll go to the open ROMs. All right? I mean, that's that's really all there is to this. Um, I think that it makes the whole, like, this whole thing, it, it just simplifies it. Um, it. I don't know if it simplifies it. It, it makes it easier. You don't have to open your case to switch which ROM image you want to load. So let me go ahead and turn this off. 
And let's unplug this keyboard, kind of get this out of the way. And you know, as far as connecting this, there's not much to it. You literally take out the 7406, you solder on this restore cable, you plug in these cables, and you're done. And you can put things back together. Um, it probably, if you do it, it won't even take you as long as the video because obviously I'm just rambling on now. But anyways, um, so this will be for sale on the website. I'll put links down below. And uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to, to ask me. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, there'll be more coming, I'm, I'm sure, uh, now that I don't have to worry about the audio being all messed up. And um, yeah, so like I said, if you guys enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell for notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next video.